Hey everyone. So in this video, I want to show how you can produce ngrams within ML.NET. But before I go straight to the code, I want to just very briefly go over what ngrams are and how they are useful. The more technical definition is that ngrams are sequences of n words together. And n can be however many numbers that you want. Kind of usually you'll see these as two or three grams. Go through just a couple of examples here. Uh, first example is a jazz band, and that's a two gram, which is also called a bigram. And we have I'm heading home, which is a three gram, and that's also known as a trigram. These ingrams are used for is to create what's called an ingram model. And what that does is that it can help us predict next words, and it can also help make spelling corrections. And you've probably seen these almost every day within Gmail to help predict what you're going to say next within your email or within your phone and your text messaging to help predict what the next word of your message is going to be. That's kind of a brief introduction and I'll put a link in the description that goes a bit more in depth into ngrams and what the ngram model is. Uh, but let's go straight to the code and to Visual Studio here. Just the usual console.net core uh, project here and let's install ml.net using version 1.4 here. Alright, first things first, let's create our ML context. And instead of reading in some data for here, I'm just going to use some kind of in place fake data. And for that, I'm just going to create a new list and I'm going to create a type of input here. And let's go ahead and create this. And that's just going to have a single property string called text. And I'll just do a couple of new items here. And the first one. I'll kind of relate to my examples that I had in the slides here. First, I really enjoy being in jazz band. And then another input, but I'm done for the day and am heading home. So we have our input data here. I can create a data view using context, data, load from innumerable. And now we can create our ngram pipeline. And the first thing we need to do is we need to use transforms at text that tokenize into words. So we need to tokenize our text first before we can generate our ngrams. Um, the output column is going to be tokens. And my input column is going to be text. And I can use the name of operator here, input.text. And I'm going to append another transform and this is going to be a conversion transform I'm going to map value to key I'm going to keep the same output column as tokens then I'll append on our last transform here we have text transform and this is where we produce ngrams and we can pass in a few parameters here First is the output column, which I'm going to call ngrams. Then the input column that we're going to use is going to be that tokens column that we created in these two transforms above. And we can tell what ngram lengths that we want to use. So if we want to get bigrams, trigrams, or anything else above. And here I'll just limit to two. And to actually limit ngram length, we need to use set the use all lengths to false. Otherwise, it's going to get other lengths of ngrams and we can give it a weighting and in here it's going to be a weighting criterion and we have a couple of different choices here and let's briefly go over these uh, first we have tf which is the term frequency that gives the the frequency of the amount of times the term is within the corpus and the corpus um, in terms of natural language processing is pretty much our 
our input text data. So it's going to be what we have up here. Then you have IDF, which is inverse document frequency, which tells how rare the term is within all within the corpus. Then you have TF IDF, which is a product of the term frequency and inverse document frequency. For this example, I'll just keep it to term frequency here. here we go. Now we have our ngram pipeline. We can fit on it with our data here. And then we can get the transformed data from the fit data. So now we have our data transformed into ngrams here, but we still have it as an odd data view. There's some extra steps we can do to actually produce the ngrams themselves here. And the first thing we need to do is that we need to get the ngrams slot names. And we get that from mo.data namespace. And this takes in a reference to a V buffer of read only memory of characters here. So let's create that. I'll call it a slot names. And I'll just set it to the default value of this type. And see, we do have an error here. We need to upgrade our language version to, to use that. And Visual Studio can do that for us. And then I just give the ref of slot names. And from there, I can get the ngrams column using the get column method here. That's going to be a v buffer of floats. And then I can pass in the column, data transform schema and then get the ngrams column from there and then I can get the slots using the slot names that get values all right so now we have this reference to the ngrams column which is what we get from this transform up here let's do uh, console dot right line I'm going to do a for each loop for each row in our ngrams column here. And we're going to do another for each within there for each item in row.items. And then we just console.write line. And here we can use the slots item that key index, use that as the index. And I'll just create an empty line for each row. And then I'll do console.readline so the console doesn't disappear when I run this. And let's actually run this and see what we get here. Here we go. So we got ngrams from the first input and then the first and the second input together here. And see what we get two items here. So we do get our bigrams. So that's how you can use ML.NET to produce engrams within your natural language processing applications. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.